Hello folks, in this video I'll be showing how to add walls and collisions to your Love 2D game so that your character can't just walk through walls. Additionally, I'll be showing how to generate these walls in-game from your tiled map. To start, we'll need to utilize Windfield, which I talked about in a previous video. Check the corner here for a link if you haven't seen that yet. These first few steps will be the same from that video. And first, you're going to go to the GitHub page right here, you can find a link in the description, and either clone it into your project, or you can download it as a zip. Then, of course, you'll want to extract this zip file. And then we're going to go in here and grab this Winfield folder. It's right next to this readme file. So I'm going to copy this. And back in our game project folder, I'm going to go to our libraries folder and paste this Winfield folder right in here. Once that folder is ready, we'll need to include it into our code. So at the top, I'm going to add in wf equals require, and then the path is libraries slash windfield. Keep in mind that this loads the whole windfield folder into this wf variable. Now we can use this variable to create our world. We'll say world equals wf dot new world. And then for the gravity parameters, this is a top-down RPG style game, so we're going to have no gravity. Zero comma zero. We also need to update the world, so down in our update function, I'm going to put this after our player movement code, so probably right here. I'm going to say world colon update, and then we need to pass in dt, just like that. And then finally down in draw, temporarily, we're going to draw the world. So we're going to say world colon draw. This will allow us to see the colliders that we create, but in the end, we'll probably want to remove this since we don't want to actually see all of those colliders in the final product. Also note that we're drawing it inside of our camera so that it appears within the camera's lens. Now that that's in place, we need to give our player a collider, or essentially a physics object that allows it to collide with walls. So back up at the top where we define our player, I'm also going to give it a collider. So player.collider equals world colon and then we're going to make it a BSG rectangle. So new BSG rectangle collider. Now a BSG rectangle is a lot like a regular rectangle, but its corners are caved in a bit. So it's more like an octagon shape, which in my experience works a little bit better for player characters. Now for the parameters, the first is the X and Y positions. So for X, I'll do 400 and for Y, I'll do 250. Then we need the size, the width and height of this BSG rectangle. Width I'll do 40, and height I'll do 80. And then there's one more parameter that determines how far caved in are these corners. To help demonstrate this, I'm going to make it 14 to start. And then one more thing I'm going to do with this collider is I'm going to make it unable to rotate. So I'm going to say player.collider colon set fixed rotation to true. So this prevents the collider from rotating around. So now that this is in place, I'm going to save and run, and we can see our collider. It's right here. And you can see what I mean by the corners are caved in. So it's like a regular rectangle, but these corners are slanted, so it's more of an oval shape. More technically, it's an octagon. But you'll notice that the collider does not move currently. It just stays right in place. What we actually want now is for the player's position to always match this collider's position here. To help with this, we're going to, after we update the world, we're going to also set player.x equal to player.collider colon get x. And same with y, player.y equals player.collider colon get y. So now the player's position will always line up with the collider. If we save and run now, we are evenly matched, although the size probably needs to be adjusted a little bit. So let's do that first. I'm going to scroll back up to where we created the collider for the player. I'm going to increase the width, let's say to 50, and we'll make this 100. And I can also change this 14 so it's less concave. I'll change it to something like 10. So let's try that out. That's a lot better. It's a lot closer to match the player's parameters or the player's size. You'll notice though now that we can't move anymore. And this is because we're always locking the player's position to the collider's position and since the collider isn't moving, we also can't move. So to address this, we're going to rework all the movement code that we did for the player 
but change it so that it's addressing the collider instead. So all this code is happening in update for these if statements that are checking for the keyboard input. And how we're moving normally is changing the x position. But instead, what we're going to do is change the velocity of the collider. So to help with this, I'm going to create some new local variables. I'll say local vx and set that to 0, and local vy and set that to 0. So these are going to represent the velocity um, in the x direction and the y direction of our collider. Now, instead of updating player.x, let's instead set vx equal to player speed. And same with all these other ones, we'll change vx equals player.speed. But since we're moving left, we want this to be negative. So we're multiplying player.speed times negative 1. And then down here for up and down, we're going to update vy. vy equals player.speed for down. And then vy equals player.speed. But since we're moving up, we need to multiply this by negative 1. And then after all that's done, our vx and vy values are updated to match whatever our keyboard input was. So we can simply say player.collider colon set linear velocity. And this linear velocity function takes in two parameters, one for the x velocity and one for the y velocity. So we can pass in vx for the x and then vy for the y. So whatever keyboard input we put in, it's going to line up with these two parameters and update the linear velocity of our collider. So if we save and try this out now, if I hold down some directions, we can see that I'm kind of moving, but I'm moving very slowly. And this is because we're updating these values to player.speed. And if we scroll back up, we'll probably find that player.speed, yes, player.speed is very low. It's only five. We need something closer to 300. That's a more appropriate speed. So if we save and run now, when I move around, the player moves. So more specifically, the collider moves. And it's matching whatever player.x and player.y is, so our player character moves with it. And with this change, you shouldn't notice any difference with how the player feels to control. Now the next step is to put in some walls for the player to collide with, since right now I can just walk through these trees and the buildings and stuff. Let's put in a very simple collider to demonstrate. So at the bottom of our love.load function, I'm going to put in a new wall collider. I'll call it local wall equals world colon new rectangle collider. Whoops, new rectangle collider, not BSG rectangle. So with this new rectangle collider, we need to give it a position. I'll put it at position 100, 200. And then for a width, I don't know, I'll do a width of 120 and then a height of 300. So with that in place, we should see that if we save and run, there it is, this big rectangle right here is our wall. But you'll notice that when we walk into it, the wall just kind of falls over. I hope you were able to see that, it's kind of faded, but the wall just fell over because both of our colliders are dynamic. Instead, we need our wall, wall colon set type to static. Static means that it's not impacted by collisions and it won't move away. So if we save and run now, when I run into the wall, the wall stays right in place and the character also stops when we walk into it. By the way, looking closer, it looks like the border of our collider doesn't exactly match the player sprite. If you wanted to, you could increase the width to be more precise, but in my opinion, being close enough is good enough. Anyway, we have our wall working and it stops the player. What we want to do now is make it so we can generate these walls from tiled. Keep in mind that this requires you to have simple tiled implementation set up for your project. So go ahead and take a look at this video in the corner to get up to speed. So in tiled for our map, we're going to start by going here and creating a new object layer. I'm going to call it walls. Now that this walls layer is created and we have it selected, we can use these tools up here for objects. So I'm going to click on this rectangle tool and I'm going to draw in some objects over top of places where I want there to be a wall. So I drew two objects, and if you use this purple selector up here, you can edit these. You can move them around and change their sizes. But I have two objects drawn in. Um, one other tip, if it's not snapping to the grid like it is for me, you can go up to View, Snapping, and then choose your option here for snapping if you need to make it more precise or make it snap to the grid. 
So with those two objects drawn in, I'm going to save the map, but then also go up to File, Export As, and then make sure you're exporting it to the correct place. In my case, it's in my game folder, Maps, and then it's this testmap.lua file. And I'm going to save over top of that, and that makes our map exported. Anytime you make any changes to your map, you need to make sure you save and export, otherwise those changes will not show up in the game. Now we need to create wall colliders that matches those objects that we drew in for tiled. So we're going to do a few things for this. The first thing I'm going to do is create a walls table. So this is going to contain every wall object that we create. Next we need an if statement. We're going to say if game map dot layers with square brackets and say walls. So what this if statement is doing is it's checking to verify that we have a layer called walls. Otherwise, we won't do anything else. So if we have a game map layer called walls, then we are going to iterate through all the objects in that layer. And we do that with a for loop. We'll say for i, comma, obj in pairs. And then in the parentheses here, we specify game map dot layers, same thing as before, walls. But then we say dot objects. So this gets us every object in the walls layer. And then we say do and end. Now inside this for loop is where we're actually going to be generating our wall objects. And we can actually take this code right here and utilize it. So we're going to paste this right in here and format it a little bit. Now, right now we are hard coding these like 100, 200 stuff as parameters, but instead what we want to do is take the object right here from tiled and use those values for these. So I'm going to say obj.x and obj.y for the x and y value, and same thing with width and height, obj.width and obj.height, and save that. So now, whatever wall we create, it's taking those values directly from the object that we drew in tiled. And one last thing, we're going to insert this wall object that we just created into our walls table. So I'm going to say table.insert walls wall, which puts our wall object into walls. This just helps us keep track of everything that we create. And just to help clarify why this works, if I select one of these objects that we created, we can see that it has an x, y, width, and height property, which we can see over here on the left. And those are the exact properties that we're accessing when we're creating this wall. Let's go ahead and save and run. And we can kind of see the white outline, but when I walk into these houses here where I drew those objects, we can no longer walk through it. And that's the same with this one up here. So wherever we drew an object in tiled, there is now a wall sitting there that we can't walk through anymore. And once you draw in the rest of the objects in tiled, we don't have to draw the world anymore because everything is accurate to the level itself. So if we remove this, we will no longer see the colliders, which is exactly what we want. If we save and run now, everything looks back to normal, but the player has a hitbox and each of these walls can no longer be walked through. So everything seems to be in place. And that about covers everything. We now have a very solid foundation for an RPG type of game. I hope you found this helpful. Please leave a like if you did. Also, I post game development content every single week, so be sure to subscribe for more. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.